but some of you have been heavily indoctrinated, so now I'm going to tell you another story. Here's the other story. The same person I know who heard the story about the person dying in the enclosed garage, that person heard another story. He heard about a story about a car somewhere in Canada that was stuck in a snowbank, and a parent put a young child into that car, and started it up, and proceeded to clear the snow away from around the truck. And what do you think happened? Well, the child died. Now this is this is a sad story, and it's highly emotional. And if you're using the um, story method to prove something, keep this in mind as a lesson. The more emotional the story is that you get, the better it is in proving the conclusion that you've reached before you even started looking at the stories. Now, now that you've heard that second story about the, 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 the snowbank, and this little child died of carbon monoxide poisoning, now I think you see those stories are proof that the instant I put the aluminum foil in this exhaust pipe, that I interfered with the truck in a way so as to endanger human life. Now, some of you are still non-believers. You're still sticking to the scientific method. And you're going to say things like this. In the, let's, let's examine the, the, um, the car in the enclosed garage with the engine running. You're going to say, well, wait a minute. The exhaust was flowing freely out of this exhaust pipe. There was nothing pushing the, um, the, the uh, exhaust gas up against the car. There was nothing to restrict the exhaust gas from dissipating into the surrounding air, like there would have been in that garage, of course. But see, that's where you're wrong. The fact that the, 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 the enclosed garage did hold the exhaust gas up against the car, underneath it, above it, both sides, front and back, and, and the fact that the, um, the uh, enclosed garage did not let the um, exhaust gas dissipate into the surrounding air, well, that's proof that when I put this aluminum foil in this exhaust pipe, even though you think you saw the, gas, uh, the exhaust fumes moving freely out of the car, even though you don't see anything up against the car, holding the exhaust gas there, preventing it from dissipating in, 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 into the air. It was. And it was because you've heard this story. And so, clearly, this was dangerous and an endangerment to human life. Now let's consider the snowbank story. You're thinking, hey, the snowbank, again, held the exhaust up against the car, prevented the exhaust gas from dissipating into the surrounding air. And you're looking at this truck, it's a warm, sunny day, there's no snow on the ground, there's nothing here to um, uh, hold the exhaust gas up against the air, there's nothing to um, prevent it from dissipating in the surrounding air. But you heard the story. You heard the story and it was tragic. A girl died, or a young child died in the car. Now, this guy who told me the story, he didn't know what kind of car this was. He didn't know how old it was. He didn't know what maintenance condition it was in. He didn't know how tall the snowbank was. But don't you see, none of that stuff's important. The fact that the girl died, or the child died, is, is the emotional proof that we need that putting aluminum foil into an exhaust pipe of this truck with a 5.4 Triton V8 engine endangered human life. Now, most of you, if you're smart, are convinced at this point that the scientific method's useless because it relies on your observations, which you just can't trust. As you just saw, your observations are that nothing's, nothing's holding the exhaust gas up here. Your observations are nothing's preventing it from dissipating into the surrounding air. And your observations are also that the aluminum foil just flew out. Because i got to tell you another story this guy told me. The same one who told me the stories about the car in the closed garage and the car in the snowbank. He told me that if 
I started this truck with the aluminum foil in there. He said the engine would keep running and the aluminum foil would stay put. And I asked him, I said, well, how is that possible? Isn't, don't cylinders work pretty much the same way elevators do? That some people have to get off before the other people can get on. And I asked him, isn't it true that the exhaust gas has to leave the cylinder before a new gas can come in? And if that doesn't happen, isn't it true that the engine just wouldn't start? And he said, no, that's not true. He said that the aluminum foil would stay there. Now, that should immediately cause you to doubt the observation you made that the aluminum foil stayed here. If he told the story and said that it would stay here and you saw it shooting out, well, who do you believe? This guy telling a story that it would stay there? Or your observations that it did not stay there and it shot out the moment the engine was started? Think about that one and you'll see the problems that you run into with the scientific method.